Hey everyone, what's up? This is Patrick and it is time for another edition of Heavy Therapy. This is another first impressions video. I always have fun putting these together. I got to five releases that came out on a Friday, April 19th and let's go over them. First up is Nuclear Tomb with Terror Labyrinthian. This is a death thrash band from Baltimore, Maryland. They've actually been around for over a decade. So they started, they formed in 2011. They put out a bunch of different smaller releases and they worked on their craft and they are here now in 2024 putting out their debut full length album. So yeah, this is a technical thrash, progressive thrash with a little bit of death metal. Um, this came out on Everlasting Spew. This is nine tracks, 32 minutes and 39 seconds of music. Yeah, I really like the last song, last few songs on this album are my favorite songs on this album. Um, the sounds, the bands that come to mind when I listen to this band are Early Pestilence, Suppression out of Chile, and also that new band from Norway called Sovereign. Um, I also believe they are influenced by Voivod and early Morbid Angel. Some of that thrashier Morbid Angel sound you'll also hear on this. The production on this is kind of raw, gritty. This is exciting to listen to. Um, I liked it, but I didn't love it. I'm giving this a 7.5 out of 10. Next up is a big release. This is High on Fire with Cometh the Storm. This was released on NNRK Heavy, 11 tracks, almost 58 minutes of music. This is uh, Matt Pike and Jeff Matt's ninth full-length album, and they also have a new drummer on this album. So they are a three-piece. Um, I am not super familiar with High on Fire, so I'm going to basically just focus on this album. I can't really compare it to any of their earlier albums. So a pummeling first track. Uh, I like a lot of the Middle Eastern uh, Turkish folk instrumentation um, on this album that begins in track one. There's an instrumental that's basically dedicated to it as well. This is stoner doom sludge metal. Uh, therefore, you get these repetitive hypnotic riffs. All the riffs are really strong, so even when they're repetitious, which they are quite repetitious, that's part of this subgenre. They're good riffs. I like the leads, the solos. Um, track six is a really great great example of what this album does in its entirety on one track, track six, which is called Soul's Golden Curse. Yeah, so a little bit of sort of um, insight into how I think of albums sort of just naturally, how, how I think about scores. So... You could think that when I first start an album, basically it's at a 0 out of 10 or it's at a 10 out of 10. But at the very end of the first track, I start to think about what makes this album either a 1 or a 10. And then I kind of mold it from there. Kind of. So what I'm trying to get at is if this album starts at a 10 when I hit play, eh, okay. Basically, this kept staying around an 8 out of 10. But then the last four or five songs were my least favorite songs, but then they all had sections, transitions, riffs, leads, solos that pulled it up a little bit. So overall, when it's all said and done, I gave this two full listens. This is a 7.9 out of 10. I like this album. I think I'll revisit it. Now I know what High on Fire sounds like. And yeah, I'm trying to get more into stoner metal adjacent uh, bands. And this is the, this is right there. This is what I want. Um, also, I hear a little bit of autopsy, even though this isn't death metal, and the sort of faster, punkier stuff. Pretty similar sounds, um, at least similar guitar tone, and yeah, overall sort of um, rhythmic um, ideas. I think of autopsy a little bit. High on fire, come into the storm. I give this a seven point nine out of ten. Next up, uh, one of my most anticipated releases when I saw that it was coming out. This is Dune with their third LP, maybe their fourth LP, Voidkind, out on Metal Blade 
records. Their previous LP, their first LP on Metal Blade, was basically a 10 out of 10 album for me. One of my favorites. I have their banner up right there. That was called Edim and Anka. Yeah, that's a perfect progressive sludge post-metal album. So it always was going to be hard to beat for me. And in fact, this album does not beat Edim and Anka after two listens. So um, for fans of Mastodon, Tool, Elder, um, a little bit of that rhythmic, s rhythmic sort of sludgier riffs that you might hear in Black Sabbath's Master of Reality. I hear that on this album. Okay, so what this album doesn't do that Edim and Anka did for me is it doesn't have a lot of those sort of standout epic or sort of just big moments. Uh, I don't, it, the, it doesn't, it's not, it's not as hooky into my brain either. So I like this album a lot. I will keep listening to it. Dune, Voidkind. I give it an 8.4 out of 10 after two listens. Great clean vocals on this album. Great harsh vocals. Yeah, good band. Uh, the production is not as, um, the guitar tone is not as sludgy either. It's a bit cleaner, slightly cleaner. Uh, good album. I'm excited to listen to it further, but right now it's an 8.4 out of 10. Next up is a band I actually never heard of until recently when I was checking out, you know, different websites and so forth, and I saw that it was coming out. This is Selbst with Despondency, or sort of, yeah, Despondency Chord Progressions. This is a melodic black metal band out of, uh, they were born in Venezuela and now they are in Chile. They formed in 2010. This is their third LP. Again, never heard of this, but let's dig into this. So Selbst Despondency Chord Progressions comes out on Debbie Murray Morty Productions. You get seven tracks, almost 48 minutes of music. And man, I love this. I love the music on this album. Um, the vocals, the vocals are what sort of made me kind of waver up and down on this album. Uh, vocals sound a bit like Behemoth, so a lot of, sound a bit like Nurgle is what I mean to say, but with variations on the vocals that make me like it kind of slightly less than I like Nurgle whenever I do really like Nurgle's vocals. Music. Musically, I think of Behemoth, I think of Gyrea, I think of Sulfur Aeon, and I think of Ulcerate. Put all that together, you get some emotional, melodic, yet blistering, fast, speedy, black metal cool listen first time through i'm going to listen to it again very soon i really really enjoy this the music especially i'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10 and finally my album of the week h.a Bilis with homicide this band is from vancouver british columbia homicide is the second full-length album it was put out on 20 bucks spin and they give you 10 tracks and 40 minutes of music so HAB this play this futuristic uh, tech death death metal. So yeah, technical death metal, um, slightly post death metal, very dissonant, uh, very cool sound. It is a band that really cares about their themes. So it's very a high, a highly conceptual album. To me, this album is dabbling into exploring into sort of three different realms or three different ideas. So I believe they are exploring sort of that debate that is high up there in physics, which is the debate between physicalism or materialism versus conscious realism or idealism. I think they're also playing around with, with a Carl Jungian sort of archetypes in psychology and also there is some themes from Hinduism on this album. But yeah, very sci-fi sci sci as well. Um, it, musically, I mean, right? So this feels like, yeah, science fiction, futuristic version of technical death metal. Love the vocals on this. So musically, I think of suffocation and revocation a lot. I also think of their label mates, Enigmatum. Love A Trey B list, love this record, Homicide. I'm giving this a 9 out of 10.
there you have it. These are the five albums that I listened to from this week so far. What have you been digging that came out this week? What are you excited that are excited to listen to that are that is coming out next week? Uh, so yeah, see you all in the comment section. Thanks for watching as always, and remember to stay heavy. Bye.